A common misconception of Paleolithic hunters is that they lived a short and brutish life, that they died around the age of 30 and therefore it doesn't make sense to adopt any aspect of their way of life. People often use this 30-year life expectancy to reject our predecessor's way of life altogether. After all, why would anyone take any guidance from our Paleolithic ancestors if they didn't live longer and healthier lives than our own? The problem is that many people confuse life expectancy with lifespan. Life expectancy is the average age a person may be expected to live that is based on various lifestyles including environment and diet. The term lifespan refers to the maximum age an individual can live. The term life expectancy of our prehistoric ancestors was short and at times brutish, and they did die around the age of 30. If we average together their high infant mortality rates, their high rates of accidental deaths, their high predation deaths, and their high number of deaths from violence. In other words, the age of death of around 30 is confounded by numerous premature deaths. Many prehistoric Paleolithic individuals died as infants or by accidents before the age of 30. Women, in particular, experienced shorter life expectancies due to childbirth or from encountering stressors related to multiple pregnancies and deliveries and at times due to male-female dietary disparities in certain cultures. Furthermore, societal mortality was also generally high among early hunters. These are deaths by cannibalism, by infanticide, strife, sacrifice, geranticide, homicide, headhunting, and from other warfare practices. Thankfully, most of these societal violent deaths have generally disappeared. However, these types of deaths bring the average life expectancy number of prehistoric hunter groups of people down significantly. The fact that archaeologists calculate life expectancy rates by averaging all deaths doesn't speak for the health of any Paleolithic hunter society. In fact, the opposite is true. A life expectancy of, of around 30 paints an inaccurate and unpleasant picture of the health of early hunters. If a hunter-gatherer survived childbirth or accidents and other premature deaths, or if they made it to the age of 30, their likelihood of living well into their 70s and 80s was not uncommon, even without the help of modern medicine. Although hunter-gatherers were diverse and complex people, they did share some commonalities. If we look at the archaeological evidence, Paleolithic hunters' remains have consistently shown to be physically fitter, to have better dentition, and to have fewer diseases than neighboring agriculturalists or urban dwellers. Paleolithic hunters generally didn't experience chronic diseases associated with old age. Cardiovascular disease, anemia, obesity, osteoarthritis, autoimmune diseases, cancer, diabetes, and other pathologies were virtually non-existent. Numerous anthropological documented cases show that prehistoric hunters were overall leaner and healthier than groups of people that depended on farmed foods. For example, biological anthropologists have compared cross-sections of femur and humeri bones from prehistoric hunter-gatherers and from agriculturalists. The findings are always stark. Results have consistently found that the bones of ancient hunters had greater bone strength and density than the bones belonging to farmers. Their bones and teeth were healthier and more robust. Individuals didn't need orthodontists in the evolutionary past and they rarely suffered from dental caries or malocclusions such as overbites, poor aligned teeth, or from other dental pathologies. This is because Paleolithic hunters minimized carbohydrates and primarily subsisted on a diet of fatty animal meats. They avoided low-quality and nutrient-devoid foods such as leaves and instead targeted high-quality nutrient-dense foods that did not contain toxins and were easy to digest. In other words, they mainly avoided plant foods and instead they used their intelligence to hunt top predators in every continent that they found themselves in. Ultimately, their diet was free of junk foods, grains, and processed foods and instead was supercharged with the highest quality foods that nature had to offer. 
To better understand the foods that the Homo lineage evolved to eat, please consider watching my video called The Evolution of the Prehistoric Human Diet. The fact is, Paleolithic hunters simply had a superior diet and they lived in a less toxic environment than the environment we find ourselves in. But even contemporary hunter-gatherer groups have been found to be healthier than individuals living in modern societies, even though their diet isn't as rich as the diet of prehistoric hunter-gatherers. The Hiwi people, for example, are a group of contemporary nomadic hunter-gatherers that live in various parts of South America. Even though they have a long history of violence and have high infant mortality rates and other high premature deaths, they too have an exceptional adult lifespan. If Hiwi women reach the age of 15, they will likely survive to the menopausal age of 45, and if they survive to 45 years of age, they have a high chance of surviving to the age of 70. This survivability pattern is robust and likely representative of other contemporary hunter-gatherer groups of people such as the Hazda, the Maasai, the Ache, or the Sami. Although the Hiwi and other hunter-gatherer groups have high premature mortality rates, living to become a grandparent is common even under these harsh conditions. Living to an old age seems to be an evolved human predisposition set by natural selection to allow a three-generation cooperative breeding pattern that allows individuals the opportunity to channel significant resources, care, and wisdom to their kin. This life history pattern promotes a long and slow developmental stage where children can grow and develop their brain but also learn acquire necessary survival skills. With a long early developmental phase, this early life history pattern also promotes an age profile that favors older individuals. In other words, it's likely that humans in general are programmed by natural selection to have a long postmenopausal lifespan because this life history pattern enables primarily women to significantly increase their inclusive fitness. The human life history pattern is significantly different from that of chimpanzees. For example, for chimps, their growth pattern is fast. They reach sexual maturity much sooner than humans and they rarely live beyond their post-reproductive period. In summary, if we exclude high infant mortality rates, premature accidental deaths or deaths caused by violence, Paleolithic hunters lived exemplary, healthy long lives, free from chronic illnesses that now plague modern societies around the world. The goal of this video is not to romanticize the Paleolithic hunters' way of life. I'm not advocating for people to live in caves, to sacrifice enemies, to practice infanticide, or to go on head hunting missions but instead to simply recognize that Paleolithic people lived extended lives free from diseases of civilization because they were exposed to a less toxic environment and because they subsisted on the appropriate human diet of fatty animal foods for millions of years. They also avoided low quality and nutrient devoid foods such as leaves, grasses, and other carbohydrates since these foods did not provide them with the necessary energy requirements to sustain their metabolically expensive brain. In contrast to Paleolithic hunters, current modern societies around the world continue to suffer from a plethora of chronic illnesses. This is in spite of having sophisticated technologies, modern medicine, and cocktails of drugs that ultimately don't cure chronic illnesses. How is the human condition better off than our prehistoric ancestors' lives when 88% of people living in modern societies are metabolically unfit? How is the human population better off today when we haven't been able to keep our children healthy? Children are now suffering from chronic diseases such as cancer, diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, fatty liver disease, asthma, and other devastating illnesses that previously didn't exist. And every year, we continue to see an increased trend in these devastating illnesses. If we're incapable of keeping our children healthy, then it's safe to say that we have failed as a society. Given the medical statistics, it's clear that our society is not equipped 
to manage the health of the population and for this reason, it is to our best interest to accept the fact that our fantastical ideas about health are fundamentally flawed. We have to admit that the current dogma concerning diet and health is incorrect and as such, we would benefit from the sapiens of our Paleolithic forebears since the evidence is clear that aside from living in a more natural environment, they also lived free of chronic diseases because they followed their species appropriate diet, the diet set in place by mother nature for millions of years. If living a full life free of chronic disease doesn't represent health, then the definition of health has no meaning. <laughs>